गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू अ न्यू क्लास इन फिजिक्स टुडे इफ यू रिमेंबर चिल्ड्रन वी हैव कवर्ड फोर चैप्टर्स सो फार एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद अ न्यू चैप्टर एंड दैट इज साउंड ओके वी ऑल नो दैट साउंड इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी दैट प्रोड्यूस द सेंसेशन ऑफ हियरिंग इन आर ईयर्स एंड हाउ इज साउंड प्रोड्यूस्ड साउंड इज प्रोड्यूस्ड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ वाइब्रेशंस when any object produces sound it is actually produced due to the vibrations in that particular object you can see that i have drawn a tuning fork over here now this tuning fork is a uh, it is a device which is made up of uh, metal uh, or it is an alloy and it has got two arms which are known as the prongs and it has a stem now this uh, tuning fork is a device when i vibrate this tuning fork it sets into uh, vibration producing a sound which we can hear but uh, because the tuning fork is uh, made up of solid metal we cannot see its prongs vibrating so for that we will what we do you know we vibrate the tuning fork and we uh, touch the prongs of the tuning fork with a with the surface of water which is filled in a beaker and when the prongs vibrating prongs touch the surface of the water we see that the water splashes out from this we come to know uh, that the prongs were vibrating and due to the vibration of the prongs we could hear a sound okay children now there's another activity here uh, you can see that uh, i have shown a stretched rubber band or it could be a stretched thin wire and with the help of this uh, we can also prove that sound is produced as a result of vibration now i have prepared a small activity for you children just a minute just have a look at the activity you can see that this is a stretched rubber band and in this stretch rubber band i'll try to uh, you know pluck it when i try to pluck this rubber band you can see that it is vibrating it is showing a to and fro motion now if it is not clear what will i do i will take a paper rider i'm taking a paper rider over here and i'm mounting this paper rider onto this rubber band you can see that the paper rider has mounted on the has been mounted on the rubber band now i slightly pluck it you can see that on plucking what happens is that the string is set into vibration once again just have a look here is the paper rider i'm plucking it what is happening the uh, paper rider flies off so children this activity proves to you that sound is produced as a result of vibrations in an object okay now in our day to day life we come across so many examples you know we know different musical instruments we know stringed instruments leather membrane instruments we have uh, instruments like the harmonium and the piano and in all these different types of musical instruments what vibrates is uh, the strings vibrate in a sitar and a guitar the leather membrane vibrates in a drum and a tabla the metal reed reeds vibrate in a harmonium and piano so as a result of which sound is produced so what is the uh, what is the main thing you have to focus on the main thing here you need to focus on is that sound is produced as a result of vibration in an object the best example is we human beings you know when we speak when we speak what happens how are we able to speak we have got a voice box in our uh, neck region we have a voice box and uh, while we speak we can touch the uh, the neck region and while speaking when we we feel that this sound uh, this voice box is vibrating so due to the vibration of the voice box uh, we are uh, sound is produced in human beings but in insects what happens they don't have a voice box so in that case the sound is produced as a result of they produce a uh, sound uh, by vibrating their wings so any which way sound is produced as a result of vibration in an object now look at the next topic it says sound requires a medium to propagate for this uh, i have taken a small i have drawn a small uh, activity for you here you can see that i have taken a bell which is connected to it's an electric bell it is connected to the cell it works on a cell and it is covered this bell is covered with a bell jar the bell jar is a glass bell jar and to uh, the lower end of the bell jar i have attached a vacuum pump now what happens you know initially when the uh, when the key is put uh, when the switch is on the the current flows through the bell and the bell starts ringing we can hear the bell ringing very clearly but after some time what you have to do is you have to remove the air slowly and steadily with the help of this vacuum pump from the bell jar and what will you notice you will notice that the bell is ringing but after some time you will see you can see it ringing but you can't hear it ringing why so 
because whatever air is present in the bell jar is slowly being removed by the vacuum pump and finally when there is no air inside or if there is vacuum inside the bell jar you are not able to hear the sound so this experiment proves that sound needs a medium to propagate sound cannot travel through vacuum okay children that's why you know uh, the astronauts who go to space they cannot uh, speak to each other they have got special devices with the help of which they are able to communicate because there is no atmosphere or uh, air in the atmosphere uh, in the uh, there is vacuum in the space okay children now we look at what are the requisites of the medium required for propagation of sound as i told you that sound needs a medium to propagate so that particular medium which is required for sound to propagate what properties or what requisites does should that medium possess number 1 the medium should be elastic the meaning of the word elastic is that uh, you know every medium whether solid liquid or gas is made up of we know it is made up of atoms or molecules now in that case what happens uh, we know that in solids the molecules are closely packed in liquids they are slightly lightly packed and and less tightly packed and in gases they are even more loosely packed so if the meaning of the word elastic is that sound is moving as a as a type of a disturbance so the uh, particles when they vibrate they have they should have a tendency to come back to their original position so for that case the medium must be elastic in nature the medium must have inertia inertia in the sense that after the disturbance has carried on from one particle to the next the previous particle should have a tendency to return back to its initial position that is the medium should have inertia and finally the medium should be frictionless why because if the medium has friction that is going to die down the sound so therefore these are the three important requisites which are needed by a medium for sound to propagate now as i told you that sound needs a medium to propagate what are the three types of mediums through which sound can travel it can travel through solids it can travel through liquids it can travel through gases but because all the three types of mediums have different arrangement of molecules therefore you know that solids are tight have tightly packed uh, molecules liquids are slightly loosely packed and gases are very loosely packed so therefore the speed of sound in all the three media varies let us look at the speed of sound in solids mostly the speed of sound in metals through metals is between the range 5000 to 6000 meters per second it is the maximum because they are very tightly packed molecules what about liquids it is slightly less it is around 1400 to 1500 meters per second because they are slightly loosely packed and in gases the speed of sound is the least that is 330 to 340 meters per second so this way the speed of sound is different in different media okay children and if anybody asks us what is uh, to compare uh, light and sound now light if you look at light light can travel through vacuum also you can see that the rays of the sun they travel millions of kilometers from space where it is vacuum and then they enter the atmosphere so light can travel through vacuum but sound cannot travel through vacuum we have seen in the bell jar experiment that it needed a medium to propagate secondly the speed of light is much much higher than the speed of sound the speed of light is 3 into 10 to power 8 meters per second but the speed of sound is different in different media we have just seen it that it is maximum in solids it is little less in liquids and least in gases then light travels in the form of electromagnetic waves okay while sound travels in the form of mechanical waves why do we call sound waves as mechanical waves because mechanics means movement so we have just seen in that activity that because the rubber band vibrated to and fro the paper rider flew uh, flew off which means that actually sound travels from particle to particle in a medium due to the vibration of the particles so therefore it involves movement that is why we say that sound is a mechanical wave and what about uh, light it always travels in the form of a transverse wave while sound can travel in the form of transverse as well as longitudinal wave now i know children a question must be arising in your mind what is the difference between a longitudinal and transverse wave we are going to look at it in the next part when we are going to do in the chapter later on i will explain it to you what is a longitudinal wave and what is a transverse wave now here you can see that i have drawn a diagram over here uh, showing the different phases in which sound can propagate in air as a medium or in gas as a medium here you can see that 
I have represented this uh, stick it represents a tuning fork. Now, when a tuning fork is not vi uh, is not under vibration, this is the condition of the air around it. This is called a normal condition where the layers of air are equally distributed. When the tuning fork is starts vibrating, now when the fork, the prong of the uh, fork, you know, moves towards the right side, you can see that it causes the air particles to get compressed and that is a disturbance. Now, this leads to the formation of a compression and you can see in the later on in the diagrams when the vibration moves towards the left and again normal every time you can see the compression is traveling ahead as the particles in this medium are vibrating then they uh, pass on the vibration to the next particles and then to the next and then to the next and in this way from one particle to the other particle the disturbance travels throughout the different layers of air and thus for the compression travels further and when the compression moves ahead it leads to the formation of a rarefaction you can see i've labeled it with a r and a c here c refers to the compression of the particles when the compression travels ahead it leads to a rarefaction and so on this is how the sound propagates in air and in the form of compressions and rarefactions now this type of wave in which the sound propagates in the form of compression and rarefactions is known as a longitudinal wave so how do you define a longitudinal wave a longitudinal wave is a wave in which the direction uh, of the uh, you can say the direction of the movement of the particles is parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave now the wave is moving from uh, moving in this particular direction and the particles are also vibrating in the same direction forming compressions and rarefactions so this type of uh, uh, this type of phenomenon in which the particles vibrate parallel to the direction of propagation of wave is known as a is known as a longitudinal wave and a longitudinal wave normally travels through uh, you know through gases okay and then uh, that is through air and other gases now we look at the other type that is the transverse wave in that case uh, you know here you can see uh, that a stone you take a small stone or a pebble and drop it in water now as soon as the stone uh, you know touches the surface of the water you can see that ripples are formed that is the concentric rings are formed you must have observed this rings are formed and these rings actually when you place a small cork or something on these on this surface it the cork will move up and down up and down in the form of a wave can you see i've drawn this in the form of a wave now this is a disturbance you can hear the pebble also or the stone falling in the water and the sound here is propagating in the form of a wave in which the in which the particles are vibrating perpendicular the vibrate the particles are vibrating perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave so when the particles vibrate perpendicular to the direction of propagation of wave it is called a transverse wave and it looks like this it looks like this it is it consists of a, a crest and a trough and a crest and a trough you can see the rise this is the crest and the fall is the trough so when alternate crests and troughs are formed and the particles are moving perpendicular can you see i've drawn the arrows the particles are moving perpendicular to the direction of propagation of wave it is said to be a transverse wave and when the particles are moving parallel to the direction of propagation of wave it is known as a longitudinal wave so therefore now i hope this is understood and clear that sound travels in the form of longitudinal and transverse waves okay children so here if you have a clear cut comparison between um, you know uh, between a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave you can see that a longitudinal wave has alternate compressions and rarefactions formed due to the disturbance of the particles while a transverse wave has alternate crests and troughs formed due to the uh, disturbance in the particles here the particles uh, move perpendicular to the direction of propagation of wave and here the particles move parallel to the direction of propagation of wave but tell uh, but remember one thing children that in case of solids and on the surface of the liquids the sound can travel in the form of transverse wave i repeat in solids and on the surface of the liquids sound travels in the form of transverse waves while in uh, while inside the liquids and 
in air through air sound travels in the form of longitudinal waves okay children so uh, i wish to conclude the class here today and the remaining topics i will continue in the next class a quick recap of what i did today was that i told you sound is a form of energy which which uh, we can hear or which produces a sensation of hearing sound is produced as a result of vibration in an object whenever any object vibrates whether solid liquid or gas it produces a sound then we uh, we we focused on the requisites of the medium which are needed for sound to propagate okay the medium should be elastic it should have inertia and should be frictionless then we discussed about the speeds of uh, sound in different states is different it is maximum in solids little less in liquids and least in gases due to the arrangement of the molecules or the atoms inside them then we had a clear cut comparison between light and sound and then we concluded by compa uh, comparing uh, the two types of wave motions one was longitudinal wave and the other was transverse wave okay children so please go through this topic from your textbook and we will discuss the doubts in the uh, in the doubt class thank you children